All right, so I'm back with Aaron. We're going to do our third Buffalo Bills mock draft done in real time. We're going to use the draftnetwork.com like we've done for the first two. Real quick, though, before we get started, I'm going through the big board right now that they have. This is the draftnetwork.com big board, all right? There's 10 names on it. A couple of these names, let's just say for, to have a little bit of a fun discussion here, let's just say the Buffalo Bills had their pick of any of these 10 guys right now. So I'm going to name these guys off to you because these are no-brainers. Nick Bosa, Quinny Williams, Josh Allen, and Ed Oliver. If those guys are on the board at nine, they're not they're top 10 worthy guys. I don't think the Bills would think twice about taking any of them. Let's run real quick, though, okay? Through the other guys, if you had an opportunity to take this guy at nine, and maybe we will in just a minute when we run our mock simulator, but right now I'm going to run through a couple names for you. Give me a yes or a no if you're the Buffalo Bills, if you would take them if they're available at nine. They got Juwan Taylor, who's on their board at three. Uh, yes. Brian Burns is ranked fourth edge rusher from Florida State. No. DK Metcalf, who we've talked about plenty on this podcast, wide receiver from Mississippi. He's fifth. No. Noah Font, tight end, Iowa. He is ranked seventh. No. Good call. Good call. I agree with you. I like him a lot, but at nine. I do too. Yeesh. All right. It's number a tough eight, one for me, number eight. Yeah. This this might come up. TJ Hawkinson, tight end from Iowa. He's eighth on their board. No. And last, Devin White, linebacker from LSU. Nope. Agreed only because of the position. He's a top ten yeah, talent. I'd like yeah, yeah. For but sure. With Milano and Edmonds there. I just don't see, they're not going to have three linebackers on the field often enough to have a top 10 pick at linebacker. So for that reason, I completely agree with you. Which of those do you think would be the hardest call to say no to though? Probably Hawkinson or maybe Taylor? Yeah, maybe. Maybe Hawkinson. Um, The only reason I said yes to Taylor is because it's a position of need still. Um, But yeah, I I think Hawkinson, especially with Brandon Bean's comments today about uh, what they look for in tight end of being not just a pass catcher, but an inline run blocker and a pass protecting run blocker. And that really talks to the kind of the overall prospect that Hawkinson is that fan isn't not that fans a bad blocker, but I think pretty much everybody agrees. Hawkins is more well-rounded at this point. Sure. All right, let's get to the mock draft. Yeah. And here we go, buddy. We're going to start a mock draft. Same thing as always. As it loads up here, we're going to draft for the Bills only. You got to click next. And again, I say this every week. If you are listening at home and you're in front of a computer, you want to do the same thing, just go to draftnetwork.com, start a mock draft. We're going to hit TN, TDN's predictive board. We're going to do four rounds. That's all we do. You know what? Let's do seven next week, just for the fuck of it. Hey, why not? Yeah. <laughs> it's the last one. We're going to go on in a, in a big blaze of glory. All right. Starting the draft, the eight are going in front of us. I'm going to read those off to you. To recap our first two, this is version three. The first time we did this, Quinny Williams fell to us at nine. That's not happening. I'll tell you what, before I even look, if that happens again, we're going to pretend that it didn't happen because I just think that's so unrealistic. We'd be wasting our time. And then last week we took Ed Oliver, a very, very strong possibility that that happens. But you know what? Let's mix this up here, okay? I haven't looked yet. Let's pretend, and we're going to make this a little bit harder on us because I think it's too easy to pick nine if he's there. Let's pretend, even if he is there, that he's not. Okay. And then we'll have to make some decisions then, okay? That'll right, make, sounds that'll good make, to me, man. Because otherwise, it'll be the same deal as last week. So here we go. Number one. Oh, this is the first time. They finally got Kyle Murray going number one instead of number six. He's went to the Giants the first two weeks. We've done this at six. Kyle Murray's going one to Arizona, Bosa two to Frisco, Quinton Williams three to the Jets. Josh Allen, four to the Raiders. I completely, I think that all four of these first four picks are to me are no brainers, by the way. Um, Rashawn Gary going fifth to Tampa. Wow. Jawan Taylor, six to the New York Giants. Seven. Oh, this don't make any sense, but whatever. Cause I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Dwayne Haskins, they got going to Jacksonville. That's not mm-hmm. happening. Yeah, <laughs> that's not happening. Maybe somebody moves up to Jacksonville and comes and gets them, but they ain't drafting them. Ooh, TJ Hawkinson goes number eight to the Detroit Lions. All right, so the Bills are on the clock here, and Ed Oliver is there. But, again, let's pretend he's gone. Not in our world, he's not. Not in our world. In our world, he's gone. 
Let's pretend Dwayne Haskins yeah, didn't. He went to, he went to uh, Jacksonville. Yeah, instead. Jacksonville <laughs> took Ed Oliver. We're, so we're going to modify yeah. this a little bit. He went there to Jacksonville at seven. We're not taking Dwayne Haskins, obviously. So now the Bills are on the clock at nine. Oliver's gone. Williams is gone. Those have been the, the picks the first two times. The best players on the board are Devin White, who we talked about. We're not going to take him. DK Metcalf is there. We're not going to take him. Montez Sweat is a guy that very well might be the pick. He's there at 11. He's 11th on their board. Um, Ryan Burns is there, who we said we probably wouldn't take. Jonah Williams, offensive tackle from Alabama. Or Christian Wil- Wilkins, uh, the defensive tackle from Clemson. Those are the big names on the board. So that's where your decision And Andre Dillard. Oh, I can't and forget Dillard's about him. There, yeah. Dillard's a big one consideration as well. Offensive tackle from Washington State. So... Those are your guys. What are your thoughts if things yep. play out like this? Which could happen. Uh, it could. And this is a scenario that I've come up in, uh, on the Cover One Buffalo podcast. We've come up with this a, f- a few times where those guys that you mentioned are off the board. And we're looking at this. And we also don't agree that DK Metcalf's one of those guys. He's not on our big board that high. Uh, so I have been really having a hard time. Greg and I debate a lot between Montez Sweat and Jonah Williams, and we like both prospects. But I think if if this is the way the board's fallen for me, I'm having a really hard conversation uh, with my offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator about which guy is going to make more of an impact immediately. And they're both positions in need. They're both positions that are very interesting. You do have Deion Dawkins at left tackle, but I think that there's a good case to be made that, one, Jonah Williams is probably a better prospect there, and two, I don't really know if Deion Dawkins is an NFL caliber left tackle long term or not, and that maybe drafting Jonah gives you some flexibility to either move him inside or as a possible trade trip. In, in some other deal. I don't know. So I like the idea of a Jonah Williams, but Monta sweat, man, as far as athletic ability, size, speed, and production, he checks all the boxes. Um, yes, I probably am leaning towards my test sweat with this scenario as well. I, I still think the bills big time are looking for a defensive end, whether it's a veteran or a rookie early on, they've kind of shown their hand a little bit at the beginning sure. of free agency. And this is a good pass rusher, arguably the second best. I mean, Josh Allen would definitely be the best and Bosa too. So, but he's up there. He's in that top tier. And I'll tell you what, if the Bills go off at the tackle, Andre Dillard is going to be in that conversation at nine. Oh, I, absolutely. I'd almost yeah. be willing to bet that. Oh, I mean, their, their offensive line coach worked him out. So that, that is telling uh, that he went out and did the workout for Andre Dillard. And so they definitely met with him. They, they definitely like that prospect. So yeah, if they're, if they're talking about Jonah, they're talking about Dillard. This is tough. And again, we're doing this in real time. We have not pre-prepared any notes. We didn't know how this was going to play out. So let's say for the sake of it, because I do think they haven't been able to address the line and, and you did lose Kyle. And after this year, you have nobody that is on contract long-term at the defensive end position for this team. You're going to be losing. They're not going to do the fifth year option with Shaq. Uh, You don't know what you have in Trent Murphy and Jerry ain't getting any younger. Uh, So I do think they want to address this position. I'm still praying every, I'm not even a religious man. And I pray every night that there's going to be a Jadavion Clowney or Frank Clark trade uh, to the Buffalo bills, but it's probably not going to happen as much as, as much fun as it would be. Uh, so they're going to have to address this somewhere in this draft. And I think if you have the ability to take a guy that that checks all the boxes for you, um, you do it. I agree. So we're saying Montez Sweat at nine. I, I think if the situation came about with the Bills and they played out this way, where Sweat or either um, Dillard or Jonah Williams were the top three picks there, I think they would go Sweat as well. By the way, here's one quick wide receiver hot take. I don't think DK Metcalf's going in the first 20 picks. Really? Yeah. I just don't. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I think once you get past like 12, 13, I think it's a, a fine area to start taking him. But yeah, I, I could see him being the first receiver off the board and around the 20s and then a little run there between that yeah, and, they, and the first I, round. I like some of the other wide receivers and I feel like tackles, defensive linemen are going to go in those teens before Metcalf. I don't know. Just a gut feeling right now. I feel like he's going to be... One of those guys who goes later than most people think. He's certainly not going top five. I can tell you that right now. Yeah, I know. I agree. And that whole top thing is going to be real interesting because like you said, uh, I've seen a lot of mocks where 
uh, the Giants are going Kyler Murray, which I, I don't think he's going past Arizona. But if he does, if the Giants, I mean, you're also hearing a lot of connection between the Giants and this Russell Wilson uh, thing. And as far as this podcast being recorded, I don't think Wilson has signed his deal with Seattle yet. Uh, so Not as a Monday could, night, right? Yeah, so that could get really interesting here. Uh, you know, going forward with any of those top teams, if anybody makes a trade for him. So we're in the second round now. We're on the clock. We're picking at number 40. And Dalton Risner just went two picks ahead of um, Buffalo. That's a guy, if he was there at 40, I think the Bills would take strong consideration to. We're kind of, let's see, uh, Irv Smith's been our guy. He's always at 50. He is there. So Irv Smith Jr. is on the clock. We took him last week. Another guy, Chris Lindstrom, who you took. And our first time we did the mock draft with the second round pick, he's also there. We took a defensive end, so we would be looking at an interior defensive lineman, which brings about the conversation I want to have have here with this second pick. Jeffrey Simmons is a guy who I think we both agree with. If he was healthy, would probably, not probably, he is a first round talent, but he's essentially a red shirt this year. Plus he got into some trouble. Granted, it was a couple of years ago. But that is a red flag. So he has had past issues with character. I hate using that word, but it's true. And he essentially would be, because of the ACL, a red shirt for now. That's the 40th pick. That's a high pick. But at the same token, Jeffrey Simmons could be a top 15 talent. If you're Buffalo and he's on the clock at 40, are you giving him some thought here? Yeah, absolutely. And I would have no hesitancy to redshirt him for a year. If you end up somehow getting stuck with more picks than you'd like in this draft, redshirting a guy gives you the ability to sort of take one without taking it on the roster this year, right? Mm -hmm. You can just give him an IR year. So I think that's a smart play. Like you said, it's very, it is a valuable pick at 40, but it's very rare that you get the ability to get it. I think he's a top 10 talent in this draft. If, if he didn't have any of the off the field issues prior and then the injury so late, um, I think he's definitely a top 10 pick in this draft. And I think he's up there with the Ed Olivers who we like at nine. And if you could get that guy at 40, you do it. Uh, I don't think the off the field issue is as bad as maybe people think it is. It looked really bad. Obviously there's a video. I think the backstory behind it uh, kind of eases it a little bit more. And then the fact that he's gone uh, to Mississippi state here for three years and been basically the exact squeaky person clean. that they yeah. squeaky clean, the teammate that they wanted him to be, he's checked all the boxes. And I think that that's good enough for Sean McDermott. They've talked about it. They don't want choir boys. Uh, they just want guys that are good football players. And if, if people have had things in the past and they've shown they can put it behind them, I think that that's good enough for them. And there's some connections for Sean McDermott at Mississippi state. So uh, he knows some of the coaches there. So if he's talked to him and, and feels confident, I don't think they hesitate at all uh, to, to get Simmons. And I love that idea of redshirting him for a year. So you got Simmons, you got Lindstrom, you got Irv Smith Jr. End of the day, you're on the trigger, man. What do you got? What do you want to go? You know what? Let's get crazy and let's go back to back Mississippi state uh, guys. Let's put Simmons out uh, and redshirt him for a year. I'll tell you this. We're doing it. I like it. This, if this happens, Get ready for some hot takes on social media. Holy shit, dude. That is going to be a player where if the Bills take him, not so much because of any past character stuff. I don't buy into that bullshit at this point. But the knee, basically being a red shirt year, second round pick, I think you're going to get a pretty mixed reaction, a very strong reaction. Some people, like me and you, would love that pick. Some people are going to hate it because you're going to be drafting oh, yeah. a guy in the second round who's going to do nothing for the Bills in 2019. What's but the guy know, from Dallas? Who's the kid, the, the linebacker from Dallas who didn't play his first year? And now he's great. Jalen, Jalen Smith? Smith? Yeah. yeah. That's the same. Yeah. And I wanted to do that with Miles Jacks. Uh, they were talking about him needing a whole year, and, and he's been a great player. I right. think. Uh, you know, there's some players that this happens to and they're totally worth it. I actually don't think Simmons drops to the second round. I think somebody takes a waiver on him in the first round, especially some of those teams that are already good. Um, if you have the ability to get somebody with that much talent this late, you do it and, and you it make that investment into your team. And I don't care if it takes a year off to get them. And look at Jadavian Clowney, his first two years, he was super injury prone and the fans got frustrated, but the team didn't. And ever since then, he's had to project really productive three-year stretch the teams don't think the way the fans do they're not going to care if this guy's got to be in the performance center for a year rehabbing if he's going to have a great five six year run with the team 
So we're in the third round now. The Bills will be on the clock here. Pick 74. We've addressed the defensive line, not once, but twice in the first two rounds. Granted, one of them won't be playing in 2019, but still. So you can make a case that the Bills might want an offensive tackle in round three if they do. Top guys on the board include David Edwards, a tackle from Wisconsin. You got Dennis Daly from South Carolina and Titus Howard from Alabama State. So those are tackles. Uh, what else could be a position here? Running back, we've discussed that many times in the third round. Miles Sanders, who we took last week. He's the top running back on the board. He's there. Daryl Henderson from Memphis. Speedster, he's there. David Montgomery, uh, um, Iowa State, I'm sorry. And Damian Harris from Alabama. They're all there. Tight end is something that we think that they're going to address, but we couldn't pass on Simmons in the second round, so we had to not take Irv Smith Jr. Now we're looking in round three, and Dawson Knox from Mississippi. Kayla Waring from San Diego State is there. Those are probably Josh Oliver from San Jose State. He's there. What are you thinking right now at this point? Is uh, Terry McLaurin in there? Yes, he is. Wide receiver from Ohio State. He's there. We yeah, wide like receiver is obviously a possibility, but yeah, Terry McLaurin is there. In fact, he's a top wide receiver on the board right now, according to the draftnetwork.com. So I have, we haven't taken them in any of our drafts. Nope. And it's been really hard for me to not do it. Tell us about them. Tell fans we've why they a few times. Oh, dude, I love Terry McLaurin. And he is my, uh, with Irv Smith, he's my top draft crush this year uh the, he dominated at the senior bowl uh i think he's a better prospect than paris campbell is the other wide receiver out of ohio state i think he's one of the most well-rounded prospects at wide receiver i think he's just got really good technique i think he's got a lot more speed than he shows he did test well at the combine but i think his game speed is better than that uh he's just got everything you want out of a football player he's uh, a captain he's a special teams ace he's a gunner so he's going to make an impact there immediately he has the ability to separate at the line of scrimmage off a of press so he's got all these things that i love to me he's a, a poor man's robert woods is how i would describe him because he's not scared to get in there and block he's a little bit scrappy more athletic than he looks uh so i i absolutely love the kid and one thing that stood out to me at the senior bowl outside of his special teams ability was he was burning defensive backs and after he would burn them he would go up and talk to him and talk to him, them about what he did and how they can stop him uh, and was just working with the defensive backs on them getting better. And I think that stood out to a lot of coaches at the senior bowl. And we know the bills love seniors. Uh, we know they love mature players. We know they love guys that can contribute on special teams. I think he's a big time process guy. And I think he fits what they're looking for. I don't know if he's going to be a prospect. They look at just because of what they addressed in free agency, but my draft crush, my you know online draft crush is so hot for him that I, I can't keep passing on him in our mocks. Well, let's take him. And I'm going to tell you what. I'm glad that we're having this discussion because this is why I think the Buffalo Bills free agency period was so important. We're going to take Terry McLaugh, McLaugh and a wide receiver in the third round. So we've taken two defensive linemen and now a wide receiver. Because of what we did in free agency, and we, I mean, because we're playing Brandon Bean right now, they went out and they signed Mitch Morse and they signed Long. They signed Feliciano. They signed Spain. They signed Nice Nisecki. They signed Adrian Waddle. They went out and signed all these offensive linemen. If there's a guy that you love at a draft at your spot and you think he's the best player, by all means, take him. You know, if, if at nine, if they do love Jonah Williams at nine, take him. Great. If take they him. love Lindstrom yep. at 40, take him. But if you don't, you don't have to take them because I think the Bills did a good enough job with the offensive line this year that they legitimately could go through this draft right now, just like we are, and say, I don't like a, an offensive tackle is not the best player in this position, so we don't need to take them. Yep. Did it running back, by the way, because Miles Sanders was the top running back on the board, and I like him, but we don't have to take him. We have Frank Gore. We have LaShawn McCoy already. We don't have to take that running back because we're thin there. We're not thin there. Not this year anyway. They will be after this year, but they're not right now. Yep. Yeah, no, I think they've done a great job. And I think while fans are clamoring for a more dynamic tight end, I think that this team is actually pretty happy with Tyler Croft as the starting tight end on this team. So I don't think they're going to even jump over jump at that position unless it falls to them the right way. I think the only place that they're saying, you know what, we got to get in this draft 
is going to be a defensive end and a defensive tackle. I think those are the two positions that they're looking at and saying, we got to walk away with guys. And in our scenario, we took a red shirt uh, defensive tackle. And I think they'd, they'd be pretty happy with that scenario, knowing that they're going to get a top talent at that position. If they don't go with Lynch, if they don't go with uh, Simmons, I think they still try to address that at some point early in the, uh, in the draft, because I think those are the only really two things that they they may feel like they have to walk away with, but everything else, I think that they feel they've either addressed or that they could still address in free agency later. And Brandon Bean spoke to that uh, when he talked about running backs today saying, you know, Hey, there's some guys in the drafts, but you know what? There's still also guys out there in free agency that can make an impact on a team uh, if they walk off the street tomorrow. So I, I think that they're very comfortable with this roster and they should be, especially offensive line. They went from one of the worst units in football, laughable unit to a legitimate starting and like real NFL starters. So uh, I, I think that they should be comfortable where they're at. We're in round four. Now the bills have two picks. We're at one twelve. And at the top of this board, anyway, there's just a shitload of running backs. You got Henderson, got Montgomery, got Damian Harris, Justice Hill, and Devin Singletary. They're all there. Mike Edwards is a guy we've taken in each of our first two mocks of safety. He's there. And at tight end, which is a position we have not yet been able to address because some things have fallen our way. I, I don't know much about these guys, honestly, at this point. Elise Mack is there from Notre Dame. I do know him. Caden Smith from Stanford. Isaac Noida from Georgia. Not a lot. It does no one who stands out for me. They're all kind at, of the same. Yeah. yeah, at tight end. Is this? Do you think this is a spot where you go running back? With the way this board has fallen, I don't hate that idea, and I'm pretty happy with all of them. A guy that I'm I'm really liking right now is Damian Harris out of Alabama. Um, I, I just I've been watching a lot of Jonah Williams because Eric over at Cover Williams broke down a ton of Jonah Williams tape, which you could go check out. Uh, because there was obviously the late, lately there's been rumors uh, flying that the Bills have the, a lot of interest in him at nine. Uh, so Eric did a lot of breakdowns, and when you're watching the Alabama breakdowns, you can't watch the offensive lineman without watching some of the run games. So I've seen a lot of Damian Harris lately. Uh, so I, I like what I see with him, but uh, I think Montgomery is also a nice fit. Which one you want to go? I'm down with the running back. I think this is a good spot. We're in the fourth round right now. It's a guy that's not a lot of pressure for him to come in and he doesn't even have to be the number two right away. He could start out as a number three. So this is kind of a low pressure pick. If you go running back, let's take one. Who do you got? Who do you want? Let's go. Uh, you know, Brian Dable, Alabama connection. Let's go Harris and say that Brian Dable really likes him and is pounding the table for him. And I think, I think I'm happy with that. All right, here we go. Damian Harris. And now we're going on the clock with our last pick, which is the second pick of the fourth round. 131 overall. I'll tell you, let's have this guy be our three Pete. If he's there, let's look at safety. And if he's there, Mike Edwards, we've talked about him the last two weeks and he is there. I think, and you let's keep it consistent. Let's then. keep it consistent because I think you bring up a good point. First of all, they don't have a great, they don't have a ton of safety depth after Poyer and Hyde. Someone could get hurt and there's no guarantee. Both of those guys are going to be around for the long term. They've both been really good. I think they both outperformed their contract to this point. I like Poyer a lot and I like Hyde a lot, but it doesn't hurt to have a good quality third safety, a youngster in there to learn from them and potentially take over or maybe one of them two someday. So are you good with Mike Edwards here again? Yeah, I am. I totally agree with you. I think they're going to have a really tough time. Both those guys uh, are going to come up to contract, and I think they're going to have a tough time keeping both of them, um, especially I look at that Adrian Amos deal uh, that he left Chicago for to go to Green Bay, and I guarantee you that Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde were looking at that deal, uh, knowing that their production's been better uh, than his has and, and knowing that they're probably if they hit the open market that that's the kind of money they're looking at all right so we have completed our buffalo bills mock draft version number three montez sweat round one jeffrey simmons a surprise in round two third round terry mclaren wide receiver from ohio state and then in the fourth round we got damian harris a running back from alabama and for the third straight week mike edwards safety from Kentucky. Fans are going to like that. I, I, again, I would say the Jeffrey Simmons pick would be a hot button topic. I could picture WGR right now, pros and cons, lots of callers, some of them probably hating it. I like it though a lot. Again, you get a top 10, 15 talent, it's worth ha having a miss a year. Oh, yeah. I mean, 
they're not the team yet that uh, can afford to do that, but they're close. And and I, I would just love to have to walk away from this draft with two top 15 talents. I, I think that'd be crazy. Can you think of a time, though? So we got two Mississippi State players in our first two picks. Has that ever happened for the Bills before? I'm sure it's happened for other teams. Obviously, it happened with the Patriots last year where they got uh, the Georgia lineman and uh, Sony Michelle. But has that ever happened for the Bills where they got two guys from the same school with their first two picks? If it has, I can't think of it. Not, I can't think of it. Not the yet. top of my head anyway. That'd be a pretty cool thing, man. To have two I, defensive look, linemen. They've spent the fewest amount of resources right now on the defensive line. So it would not be surprising. And even if it's not, let's just say it's not Jeffrey Simmons. Let's just say they get Montez Sweat at nine, which by the way, and we'll talk about this more next week, even if Ed Oliver is there at nine, that's still a conversation to be had between Montez oh, Sweat yeah. and Ed Oliver. 100%. And let's say they go Sweat, and let's say they take, I don't know, maybe Jerry Tillery or another yeah. lineman, Sanders, that Khalil Sanders we talked about, anyone at 40 who's going to play. I think it's a very strong possibility that the first two picks could both be defensive linemen, even if one of them's not Jeffrey Simmons. Yep. I actually can see also a scenario and, and this is putting on my tinfoil conspiracy hat a little bit, but I can see a scenario where they try to get back into round one and go after Wilkins, uh, a, a guy that checks a lot of the process bo- boxes. And if he starts falling into the mid twenties, I could see Brandon Bean similar to how they went back up to get Edmonds last year, uh, packaging some picks. Cause we know they're not going to leave with 10 prospects. No, I think no, no, no. Everybody no. can say whether they trade back to future picks or something, they're getting, they're moving some of these picks somewhere. So they're moving in this draft. It depends on where, and if, uh, if they don't hit on defensive tackle early and Wilkins is, is kind of hanging in the twenties, I think that he's a target. I'll tell you what, if I were to bet on one thing in this draft above drafting any player, I was to have one bet that I'd feel confident in and said the Bills aren't picking at 40. Yeah. They're coming up from 40. I don't know for who. I don't know how high. Maybe it's just two, three picks. Maybe it's 10. Maybe it's 15. I don't know, but they're not staying at 40. That's just the way Brandon Bean operates. He's going to move I like up. it. Me I too. like it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Listen, before I let you go, follow Aaron, by the way, everyone. Aaron's on Twitter at AaronQuinn716. Tell everyone what you guys got going on at CoverOne.net. It's getting really close to draft time. I'm sure you guys are pumped over there. Dude, we got a ton of content coming out. Like I said, uh, Eric was just doing some Jonah Williams film, breaking it down. He's got a piece coming out on him. Uh, One of the things that Eric does best is archetype players. So I I do a lot of the graphics over there, too. So I was working on some archetype stuff. Yeah. Um, breaking it down by positions, top five guys that meet all the thresholds for the bills and basically kind of helping to determine who they're really looking at. So there's some interest. I can't get into too many of them until he releases them, but he's going to start dropping those here this week. Uh, and he's going to talk about it on our podcast this Wednesday, uh, a little bit about which guys that bills are going to should be looking into. Um, and obviously we have the two more podcasts before the draft comes up. Uh, Nate Geary, Greg are holding it down this week. Uh, I got some relatives in town, so they're they're holding it down. And then next week we got Russell Brown who covers our draft pod and we're doing a, a full mock, uh, just really talking about the positions, the archetypes, who the bill should be pinpointing all that the week before the draft. And we have some cool giveaways from uh, the Buffalo sports card convention uh, that they've, they've sponsored this show. And so we're going to do some cool giveaways live, just a lot of content coming out. Cover one Buffalo. Uh, if you like podcasts like this, one you're listening to check it out, um, you know, we're, we're all bills all the time. Uh, and, and it's a lot of fun. We got to get you on the show, man. Anytime, bro. Anytime. I got you. Next week, me and you right here, Buffalo Bills, our final mock draft. Set of four rounds. We're going to do all seven, even if we got to just throw some names out there in the last couple rounds. Who really cares? It'll be fun. Again, seven rounds, Buffalo Bills, final mock draft, just two days before the actual NFL draft. Me and you. Let's do it, man. (laughs) 